You are listening to the Lucha Central Podcast Network. And now, Lucha Central Weekly. Hello and welcome to the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast. This is the podcast that covers news and events happening in the world of Lucha Libre, talking Mexico-based promotions and top independents, along with Luchador-related news from throughout the United States. The Lucha Central Weekly Podcast is part of the Lucha Central Podcast Network on LuchaCentral.com. This podcast and others from the network are also available on all major streaming platforms like iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and more. And, of course, a special shout-out to our streaming partners at TheChairShot.com. My name is Miranda Morales, and I'm one of the co-hosts of the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast. And let me bring in the rest of the team. Introducing first, he is the dashing one, Mr. Dusty Murphy. Dusty, how's it going? Um, it's going pretty great. How's it going for you, Miranda? It is going well, very, very well. So well, in fact, I'm going to bring in the third member of this trio team, and that's who? 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 It is the one and only Brendan Barr. That's who. Hey, hey how we doing? I, I now, now the way that you've done it that way, I really want to know what it would take. How bad does it have to be before you don't introduce me? <laughs> that's a very good point i mean that's a, that's the ultimate question what is your rock bottom you know what would be the rock bottom that i'd have to face to not be like you know what i'm not going to introduce either one of these fucking guys <laughs> i'm just gonna say screw it and uh you know you guys do the intro yourselves uh, i mean dusty does pretty okay I, I would I would struggle. <laughs> well, that's true because. The limitation of Miranda. <laughs> well, I just <laughs> one I, look with yours, Brendan. There, there has to be you know some involvement because doing the single thing yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't quite work. D- Dusty will apparently is just the dashing one, so it doesn't matter if I'm here, you're here. Dusty's still going to be dashing. So. Yeah. You got to make it work for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. And I don't even have an intro. <laughs> you uh, are. You, you are need no introduction. Intro. Yeah. We're but gonna I go with that. Introduction. The presence <laughs> of Miranda Morales speaks for yes. itself. Does. That is true. That is. I, I would love to take full credit for that, but I, I won't. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Keep on listening to the Lucha Central Weekly podcast to see what Miranda Morales' rock bottom is. <laughs> Tune in every week. <laughs> it's like the bookend, only more vicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. So, you know, I, that intro or that setup was a lot better than I was going to say. I was just noting yesterday, I was talking to my husband about how this coming weekend, you know, for fourth, uh, of course, July, for Cinco de Mayo, probably has to be one of the busiest times for Lucha Libre in throughout the United States. Like, and, and Canada. And Canada, yes. Yeah. I think not, everywhere but Mexico. Not is Mexico at all. <laughs> It's Same super wavelength. busy with Lucha Libre, but this weekend, I can't tell you how many Lucha shows I have seen shared and posted or advertised for, you know, and this And all of them week. have taco bars. Yes. So many taco festivals, taco bars, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we'll be plugging in some, you know, later on the show. Don't you worry about it. But just, you know, <laughs> it was just my bright observation earlier that, oh, like, that. Dang, there's a lot of Lucha Libre shows happening this weekend. Yeah, I uh, I was Googling what my local Lucha Libre Volcanica was going to be doing. By the way, they're in a casino where the 
still be doing a taco bar as well. But uh, I was in trying to find that. I was inundated with all of these uh, Lucha Libre shows that only popped up, only pop up on Cinco de Mayo, apparently, because I'm like, mm-hmm. I've never heard of this promotion before. I'm like, yep. oh, <laughs> because it's the bar that's hosting it has has branded themselves as a Lucha Libre promotion. So there we go. Oh yeah, uh, that's the, we, the, the the third thing is tequila and or mezcal. Yes, <laughs> yes, tacos and tequila. It's gonna be very important. I went so, to the tacos and tequila festival last year with Ruben, and we ended yeah. up going to Jack in the Box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, when and you it, have it every day. You yeah. Know, yeah. That Ruben was like, "No, nah, I have way better tacos than this." Like. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine the same may be happening this weekend in Agua Caliente. I. I that is that is where uh, what I have heard, especially about I will not name the one. There was a Canadian show where the taco bar was so infamous because the rice had peas and carrots in it. <laughs> That's a Mexican show. Like, <laughs> like, like a Chinese Mexican. restaurant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they, that was I heard about that for years. No, I think like, <laughs> All right, folks, Uh, we will be talking more about the Cinco de Mayo next week because uh, we will all have lived through it at least once. I get to do two different shows because one of them is not happening on Cinco de Mayo. I don't know about shows. Two different experiences. My work is doing a Cinco de Mayo thing on not Cinco de Mayo. Mm -hmm. And they've asked me to provide some, some Mexican flavor. Oh. Awesome, indeed. Well, uh, and, you know, we'll be talking a little bit more about some some Cinco de Mayo shows, uh, or at least one uh, coming up in a little bit. <laughs> but let's transition into how we start off every show: news of the week with Brendan. All right. So before Cinco de Mayo, every year in Mexico celebrates Children's Day. Um, I Miranda, I locked myself out, brain locked myself on that. Can how do they say it down in Mexico? Uh, I believe it's Dia de los Niños. There yeah. we go. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that happened. Uh, there were a number of pop ups. So this is where they get busy. You know, we all the all the luchadors get to work on Cinco de Mayo in the United States and Canada. Children's Day shows pop up everywhere. They're in schoolyards. They're in the parks. They're uh, you know, the, uh, all the CMLL owned arenas, if it's on the wrong day of the week, will have an extra show, um, that, you know, <laughs> just all over the place. I didn't, I couldn't get a lot of great results from any of these shows. Uh, Lucha Blog said that they, basically that they happened, and then, uh, a couple of other people that I've talked to were like, yeah, they happened, but there wasn't anything major or anything, you know, and I was looking on social media for cool pictures of wrestlers with kids. There are, a bunch of them out there. So if you want to go on Instagram, it's particularly good for that. And just look for uh, uh, the Children's Day. Uh, you will find a number of people in mass with children posing near a ring where they probably want to match. Um, but yeah, it, so those, it's always fun. Uh, if you are out there and you're listening and you, you're like, I've always wanted to just say something to the... Uh, the crew here at the Lucha Central Weekly, send us a link to your favorite uh, image from Children's Day. Just, you know, I thought this one was cute or whatever. You don't even have to give me context. Uh, there we go. That was that was my big news. I'm mostly going to have Miranda doing the rest of the news here. I understand you have some information on Mass Republic shows and uh, maybe a little bit about Queen of Indies. Yes, uh, Mass Republic, um, you know, are the overlords, uh, the second people that we think above God on this show, which is Kevin Klein, Rock and Ruben Zamora. Um, Mass Republic will have not one, but two shows, uh, Cinco de Mayo weekend. Uh, on Friday, May 5th, they will be having a show, uh, in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Uh, and it's going to be, ooh, trying to, that was just the, uh, uh, the, the noise of the, uh, of the, uh, post on social media about it. Uh, but yes, so, 
Uh, Friday, May 5th, they're going to be at Haven City Market in Rancho Cucamonga. Um, sh- the doors open at 5.30, show starts at 6 p.m., and it's going to feature uh, the likes, of course, of Psychosis, Super Astro Jr., uh, Zuxis, uh, Vipress, uh, Zara, and Bengala, and, and many more on that show. Um, and then the next day on Saturday, May 6th, they will be making the return to Agua Caliente Casinos in Cathedral City. Uh, now for that one, uh, the seating tickets or, or seats have been sold out. There are, there is a limited number of standing room only tickets available at the door. So that is the only way that you'll be able to experience that show with a lot of the theme talent. That is going to be from the Rancho Cucamongo show over to the uh, Agua Caliente show the next day. So uh, already sold out. Again, limited standing room tickets available at the door. So you have to be in Cathedral City in order to get your tickets that day. Um, but Cathedral City and Agua Caliente Casinos has been an amazing host and partner with Mass Republic for the uh, Lucha Libre Mexicana Viva La Lucha shows. So uh, that starts at 7 p.m. on Saturday the 6th. And uh, again, more information on Mass Republic social media for both shows. But if you're in the California area, Rancho Cucamonga or Cathedral City, you have an opportunity to watch some Lucha Libre action sponsored by Mass Republic and possibly watch uh, Ruben eat uh, Jack in the Box. Yeah, yeah. Jack in the Box or Whataburger if they've or got what that out in Rancho yeah. Cucamonga. <laughs> That I don't think so. I don't. I don't know. That's a good question. I I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I'll have an answer for you by the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he is on it. Um, as well, happening very soon, we have Queen of Indies, which is scheduled for Saturday, May 13th, in San Francisco. Uh, the very first Queen of Indies. Uh, there are four first round matches that. Uh, have been announced. Uh, I'm trying to get some of that information specifically about those. Uh, you can follow. Now, there is not a specific uh, uh, social media for Queen of Indies. Uh, it is a joint event happening with West Coast Pro and Pro Wrestling Revolution. Um, so if you follow West Coast Pro on social media or Pro Wrestling Revolution, you will be able to see, uh, some of the matches announced there, which include first round matches, Billy Starks versus Unagi Saikaya. Sayaka. Sayaka. Yeah, uh, that's a big fan. <laughs> yeah. And now I was going to say, now listen to me, butcher name. So I apologize <laughs> in advance for this. It's my gimmick. You're stealing my gimmick. Well, it's now my gimmick now, unless you want to say these, these names here. Um, up next, we have Lady Frost versus Dulce Tormenta in another first round match. Uh, Queen Anamita, uh, versus Maria and High End versus Masha Slamovich. Uh, those are all first round matchups for the Queen of Indies tournament. Uh, also, a few other matches that have been announced for that show, as I pulled that up. Uh, we are going to have a six women tag. Sorry, I'm just skimming through to find that information. There we go. Uh, we have, uh, it's a special attraction, six woman tag team match, uh, Nicole Savoy, Lady Apache and Charisma versus, and please help me with these, uh, Chiusa Nagayo, Takumi Iroa and Sandra Moon. Uh, so three on three trios match happening also at King of Indies along with the first round matches. So I'm sorry, Queen of Indies. Um, you can get your tickets for Queen of Indies at QOITickets.com. Again, that's QOITickets.com. Um, 
we also are going to be having a tag team match. Uh, Milo and Rochelle Riveter versus uh, Robbie and Brooke Havoc. Uh, and then a special attraction match, Mio versus the winner of the uh, tryout that's going to be happening, I believe. Um, either has happened or will happen um, that weekend. So uh, information about Queen of Indies, again, no specific social media, but it is a joint event hosted by Pro Wrestling Revolution and West Coast Pro. So follow either one or both of them uh, on social media, and that's where you're going to see graphics, talent, and match announcements for Queen of Indies. If I had to speculate on that, uh, on the, that I believe that the – event has started, like they've started opening rounds for the uh, tryout to get that match, and then the final uh, of that will be yeah. mm-hmm. on, the, on the weekend, so that yeah. you can have the, the lead into who the winner will mm-hmm. be, but that's, yeah. that's just me using my wrestling management brain on how, how would I do that. Yeah. And it is held at the Irish uh, United Irish Cultural Center in San Francisco. That makes um, me want to go even more. Yeah. It's a great venue. That's where they've hosted King of Indies. So a very similar feel, but also very different. Brendan, I think you mentioned it uh, last week um, or the week before about, you know, there's only one first time. So Absolutely. To be yep. there at the very first Queen of Indies is going to be huge. I will be there. I am so excited for this entire show. I'm really um, honored uh, to even be able to uh, attend and to announce for the show, I am just so excited for it. And I, and again, you only get one first time, so um, exactly. be there for Queen of Indies. Yeah, it's going to be something special. Um, people will be talking about this one for a long time, I guarantee, because they still talk about the King of Indies with kind of that sort of nostalgia and reverence. The first couple, they were like, those were something special. So yeah. there you go. Um, that's what I have for my part of news of the week. All right. Well, then we're just going to dive into the indie roundup. Uh, I, I still, even it's been forever since uh, we had the, the musical intro from Dusty, but I still, when I say that, miss that, that little, I did love that intro. That's <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> What? Yeah, there you go. One of these days, we're gonna have to just bust out the guitar. Yeah, <laughs> just, just do it maybe, live. When we do a live podcast, maybe we'll have him do it there. Yeah. <laughs> um. So my first one is I'm gonna follow up on this. Uh, we I've been given talking about uh, uh, El Arbito has been giving me a lot of information. He has requested that we refer to him as Red Card Lucha because that is the branding he's using for distributing his own videos. Um, So Red Card Lucha sent me some more results, uh, which is kind of cool. He gave me some good stuff, some some good footage. Uh, He also, which uh, something that we haven't been pushing as much, uh, we also got uh, a video that he did of a trip to Mexico to go to a CMLL-affiliated arena uh, that's just on the other side of the border. So we put that up in the uh, Facebook group that we have here, which is uh, just, and I had it, I should have, it's the uh, Lucha Central Weekly News Network group on Facebook, I believe. Um, one of you two could verify that while I keep rolling on here, please. Uh, but yeah, so we posted that video, uh, but I'm going to move on to my results here. Uh, so he gave us some results from a show that, from a show he was at, where, uh, Hardcore Crew, which is, uh, Medico Brujo and Sick Boy, had a tag team win over, uh, Gordo Del Mal, which is a fantastic lucha name. Like, apparently they're just local guys, but I really want to see more of Gordo Del Mal. Like, come on. Great branding there. Um, so, and then we had uh, Connect Junior and King Charo in another tag team match, and they won against Tigre Blanco and Sirius GT. And then uh, the main event for that evening 
was Maldicion uh, and Fuerza Guerrera against Epidemius and Hijoda Das Caras. Uh, Maldicion and Fuerza Guerrera got the win on this, which was it allowed uh, Fuerza Guerrera to take the microphone and announce that he is planning on retiring in the next couple of months. Um, I uh, told Red Card Lucha at the time that I am suspicious of this because Lucha retirements never work that way. He he, he says, no, I think this is real this time because he looks like really uh, worn out. But we'll see. We'll see. But uh, there we, you, you have it here. Where's a Guerrero has announced his retir- retirement. Uh, we will uh, start the countdown. Um, I have some IWRG results uh, from Arena Nalcapan as well. Eremis was present there. He had a win over Tonali. Uh, I we had a big multi-man match with Astro Boy, Hellboy, Hijo de Canis Lupus, Luca, Noisy Boy. Super Mario 47 uh, against uh, Cancer Robo Negro, uh, Gianna Valletta, Heavy Metal, Nozaki, Rocky Cassis, and Shaco. And the first team with Astro, Astro Boy, Hellboy, Hijo de Canis Lupus, and more got the win on that one. So that was kind of fun. And, uh,. Again, oh, that's that's what I've got right now. Thank you to uh, Red Card Lucha for providing some results. But I'm going to also toss over to Miranda, who not just works on the show. She sometimes contributes results to the Indie Roundup. Uh, yes, uh, I was <laughs> announcing for Pro Wrestling Revolution this past Saturday, April 29th. In San Francisco, um, at, uh, John, uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember the name. John O'Connell High School. Um, so, uh, you know, the return to John O'Connell High School, Pro Wrestling Revolution goes, um, uh, once to twice a year there. And we had six matches, uh, for this fantastic card. Uh, we start with our opening contest, which was a trios match. Uh, the team of Vaquero Fantasma, Necrosis, and Papo Esco, also known as the Lucha Horsemen, took on the team of Xavion Jr., DJB, and Nikki Savage, known as Planet Rock. Uh, in this match, the Lucha Horsemen won. Uh, really, the experience and size made a big difference, but very impressive turnout by the, you know, young team of Planet Rock, um, especially, uh, Xavion Jr. and DJB being kind of more of the tag team and Nikki Savage being super entertaining. Um, a product, all three of these products of the Pro Wrestling Revolution Training Academy. Um, so they have had very excellent training uh, and have a great skill level, but it is very hard to beat three very experienced, tough luchadors like Vaguero Fantasma, Papo Esco, and Nicosis. Uh, for our next match, we had a uh, a uh, four-way match uh, for it was not for any title. Um, excuse me, just a four-way match. Um, El Kukui versus Moon Dog. Uh, Otis Dalton versus Starboy Charlie versus Diablo Azteca. And I always say this: El Kukui continues to surprise me as someone who is a larger luchador, but incredible skill. Um, and incredible agility for a bigger dude. Um, think of your, you know, your Jacob Fatus, uh, think of, you know, your Tauruses, think of, um, Bronson Reeds, think about, you know, guys who are bigger in stature who can move. Definitely that's the category of, of El Kukui. Uh, my first time, I believe, seeing Starboy Charlie out, and he's also, you know, very agile, but much more on that smaller end. Um, Kukui getting the win in that match. Then we had, uh, the tag team, uh, match for the Pro Wrestling Revolution Tag Team Championships. Uh, Lucha Solos making their first defense of their one titles against the team of uh, Drago and Aerostar. And they continue to steal the show. Lucha Solos do things uh, 
so well in the ring. Amazing, amazing, high flying, fast paced lucha, you know, lucha libre that like I just, I, you have to see to believe. You truly have to see it to believe it. Um, and I'm so thrilled about them, you know, last show when they became tag champions. I think they are the exact champions that Pro Wrestling Revolution needs. Um, and with that, they retained uh, in their first big title defense since winning the titles um, against two very established, well-known luchadors who are an amazing team in their own right. Um, so I would say if you're ever wondering about, you know, what's a draw at a Pro Wrestling Revolution show, the Lucha Solos, period. I mean, like, they're how can they not be? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And again, people aren't familiar with the story of the Lucha Solos. You know, they, uh, you know, also known as the Tijuana Street Legends, um, wrestled in the streets of Tijuana, you know, uh, for money. You know, that was their attraction. So people would be driving by and they would be doing, you know, Lucha, um, in the streets, not in a ring. And, uh, you know, the, that training and insight learning in, you know, literally in the streets. I mean, Stuff they learn in the streets, they seem to do with ease inside a wrestling ring. Well, I mean, you can't get any any stiffer than the concrete. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the school of hard knocks there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in our next match, history was made. Uh, Pro Wrestling Revolution announced that they would be crowning new trios champions and debuted the new trios belt at this show. We had the team of La Migra versus the team of Los Elementos, which was the team of uh, Ray Oros, Gravity, and El Viento. Uh, and a really heartfelt match. Uh, with that, though, La Migra won and became your new Pro Wrestling Revolution trios champions. Uh, you know, they are a big force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Not very popular by any means, but some of the most talented wrestlers. Um, and they have such a unique uh, combination of strength, um, but also an understanding of Lucha Libre. And I think that's what makes them very, very tough competitors. Um, but the team of Los Elementos, um, not somewhat makeshift, but not really. El Viento and Rey Oros have been teaming, but adding gravity into the mix as well. They flowed very, very well for being, you know, a trio that doesn't normally wrestle together versus the very core unit of La Migra. Um, but, you know, with that, La Migra are now your new trio champions. And we'll see, you know, who they face uh, in future defenses. Um, definitely not a fan favorite moment. I will tell you that. <laughs> It's never a fan favorite moment. Never a fan they... favorite moment with <laughs> La Migra. Yeah. Unless they're um, on the receiving end, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, up next, we had our Pro Wrestling Revolution Open Week Championship, and it was a five-way scramble. Uh, the champion, Vinny Massaro, had to defend against Mago, Titus Alexander, Adis, and Commander. And uh, this was a big moment, I mean, for Commander to come in so shortly after being signed with AEW. Saw lots of fans in the crowd with Commander merchandise he was selling. And that's another thing about Pro Wrestling Revolution shows, which is awesome. Before every show, you will have all the luchadors out there selling their merchandise, whether it's masks, T-shirts, stickers, caps, um, photos, autographs, all of that. Um, and so it's such a cool opportunity to get close and personal with the luchadors. And, um, yeah, I mean, Commander was out there selling his shirts. I saw so many people in the crowd with those Commander shirts. Heck so yeah. that's such a cool thing to see. And he was exactly the performer that you anticipate him to be in the ring. Um, some very funny spots between all five of these gentlemen. You wonder how can, you know, a five way work, um, in that capacity, but there were some really great spots where, you know, they were trying to help, uh, Vinny Massaro do a kip up because he could not, um, slapping, uh, each other with, you know, items, especially Adi's had a, a series of rubber tubes that he uh, used to slap people, and they all then went around and slapped each other with it. Um, very, very entertaining. And the open weight division, you know, in those championship matches are some of the toughest because they are typically, you know, those uh, multi-person matches. So Vinny Massaro always has a big challenge ahead. But 
Once again, he came out victorious and retained the open weight title. And then in your main event, we had uh, our Pro Wrestling Revolution World Heavyweight Champion, Dr. Wagner Jr., defend against El Misterioso. El Misterioso, for those who have not watched, he's been on um, New Japan Strong, um, AEW, and really a staple within Pro Wrestling Revolution. A little bit more soft-spoken, but is definitely... Uh, a strong wrestler and can display that in the ring. Dr. Wagner Jr. came out much more of a, a heel this time around. We haven't seen him in a few shows um, pretty much since he won. So this is his first defense of the championship since beating Kratos for it. Um, really intense in and out of the ring, literally in and out of the ring, chairs flying, barricades being broken, um, which, you know, if you've ever seen a Dr. Wagner Jr. match, was is to be expected um but towards the end kratos came out seemingly to help el misterioso win um but el misterioso decided he didn't want help from kratos and ultimately the distraction led to dr wagner jr being able to uh pin el misterioso uh for the win however afterwards they teamed up against La Migra. So it looks like in the future, we are going to have El Misterioso and Dr. Wagner Jr. team up to face La Migra. Uh, so we will continue to see what happens there. But that was your Pro Wrestling Revolution show um, in San Francisco, John O'Connell High School. Uh, again, these are such amazing shows to attend. Uh, you have some of the best Lucha Libre talent in the world cross paths with Pro Wrestling Revolution. They have a meet and greets before every show, and they have a lot of luchadors day afterwards to meet and greet, to, uh, you know, sell merchandise. So it's a, just a very fantastic show to be a part of and to watch. And you'll see talent you really don't see anywhere else, like Lucha Solos. Um, you know, they have been working here and there throughout the United States, but they're regulars in Pro Wrestling Revolution. And they are, you know, you have to see to, to believe. So, um, you can follow Pro Wrestling Revolution on social media. As I mentioned, it's PW Revolution. And, you know, that's not it for them. Uh, they will be doing a show in Mexico in, uh, later this month in, uh, in May. And, uh, starting on May 4th, they're going to be, uh, at the Gordon Bursher Night Market, um, Thursday nights. Uh, for Lucha Libre. Um, they are going to be at the San Jose Earthquakes versus Los Angeles Football Club um, at Levi Stadium on May 6th. And all throughout the summer, they're going to be at different events um, like Gordon uh, Gordon Bursch um, throughout uh, the summer. They're going to be at the Rose, White, and Blue Parade and Festival on July 4th. They are going to be at the Viva Park San Jose, which is a series of free events focused on health and wellness resources and physical activity. That's going to be happening on July 14th. And also the uh, Rich City Week in the city of Richmond from our exhibits featuring Lucha Libre and Pro Wrestling August 4th. And they will be at the Fresno Grizzlies versus... Uh, Los Albites uh, de Modesto, um, which is a Lucha Libre themed event um, on August 18th. All of these dates are posted on Pro, Pro Wrestling Revolution social media. You can also visit ProWrestling-Revolution.com for information on their events and on the Pro Wrestling Revolution Training Academy. That is all that I have for Indie Roundup. Um, if you are a pro wrestling, uh, pro wrestling fan, um, if you are a wrestler, photographer, referee, announcer, um, anything to do with pro wrestling, especially Lucha Libre, and you want to share with us events coming up, please, please feel free to reach out to us uh, at uh, our social medias, which we will share at the end of the show. But we would love to highlight more Lucha Libre happening 
throughout the U.S., especially this weekend. There's going to be a lot of Lucha Libre, so we better hear from all of you yes, uh, next week. We better have a plethora of Lucha Libre shows happening throughout the U.S. that you share with us because we would love to hear really how Lucha Libre is spreading. We joked about it earlier but, you know, in reality, it's one of the best times for Lucha Libre all year is Cinco de Mayo weekend. So we hope to see more of that in our inboxes for next week's show. With that, we're going to kick it off to Denise Alcedo, who brings us this week's Lucha Central Central. Why should you visit TheChairShot.com? TheChairShot.com is your home for hard-hitting reviews, news, opinion, and analysis with attitude. Why? Because you're smarter than the average fan. TheChairShot.com. Always use your head. Hey everyone, it's Denise Salcedo here in Lucha Central Central with a reminder of where and when to catch all of the great network content this week. Get the full lineup and listen to all of our shows in the podcast network section of LuchaCentral.com. On Tuesdays, Mass, Mats, and Mayhem takes you inside the world of Lucha Underground as they take you weekly through the series with the benefit of hindsight and the benefit of special guests from the groundbreaking series. Check out the premiere video stream every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on the Lucha Central YouTube channel and at LuchaCentral.com. Then listen to it on your favorite podcast platform every Wednesday. Tuesday nights live at WrestleBoss, where Fabi Chulo talks MMA and pro wrestling with special guests and listener Collins. Visit WrestleBossLive.com Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific to listen live or call in with questions or download the show on podcast platforms on Wednesdays. Wednesday nights live on Facebook, it's Spanish show La Mesa de los Margaros, giving you both the news and the cheese made from around the lucha world. Special guests and a whole lot of fun make it one of the most talked about shows in Mexico. Thursdays, it's straight out of the bodega with Papo Esco and PWR promoter Gabriel Ramirez as they have guests from throughout the wrestling world pull up to give an inside look into their careers. From indie standouts to television superstars, each week brings a new name and perspective. On Friday, it's your double dose of Lucha Central Weekly podcast. One in English y el otro en Español. Lucha Central Weekly is where you'll find all the top stories of the week, both inside and out of the ring from Mexico and anywhere luchadores are in action across the globe. Be sure to subscribe and follow all your favorite Lucha Central Network series on your favorite podcast platforms, either by their own series name or subscribe to the Lucha Central Podcast Network show pages to get all of the shows in one easy feed and please consider giving a rating to help more fans find the shows that you love for now this is denise salcedo signing off from lucha central central have a great week lucha-masks.com by pro wrestling revolution bringing you in partnership with mask republic the lucha brothers as well as japanese legend ultimo dragon Go to lucha-masks.com and fight lucha strong with masks from your favorite lucha legends and pro wrestling revolution luchadores. Stay safe in style and represent your favorite luchador. Get yours now at lucha-masks.com powered by pro wrestling revolution. Right, and we are back with the second half of our show, and let's get to it. We got a lot of promotions to cover, so we are going to start off with AEW this week from Dusty. Yeah, like we kind of had some good stuff going on this week with a with AEW. Um, first up, we had Orange Cassidy versus Bandito, and this was surprisingly very fun. I really enjoyed this match. A lot of exciting stuff went on. Um, sorry, I'm struggling for my notes here. Um, but, yeah, just a fantastic match. It was kind of what you'd expect. We saw a lot of mutual ex- uh, respect, rather, between them, which I didn't necessarily expect. Uh, I liked that, um, you know, Bandito hit his high-flying moves. Orange Cassidy had his style of wrestling. Orange Cassidy won and retained the title. But Bandito really looked good in this match. The lot went on. Um, the announcers, I did want to mention, the announcers mentioned that Bandito had been studying up on 
Orange Cassidy style during his time away. And he kept Orange Cassidy from putting the hands in the pockets, which was kind of a cool spot. And But the announcer said he'd been working on a more methodical style. He'd learned some of the counters to Orange's moves. So it was a great story to tie all that in. Um, AEW is apparently really leaning into the stories right now. They're going to have a stronger focus on it, according to Jeff Jarrett. So it was cool to see Bandito come out and put out on just such a strong performance, but also for them to be building a story for him right away. And Orange Cassidy is one of the most popular wrestlers in AEW, and for him to kind of have that rub with Orange Cassidy, even though he didn't win in the title match, I think it'll you know, be good for Bandito. Exciting for him. We're coming up on a brand split, so a lot of shine and shine on Bandito right now is a good thing. It shows that they, you know, are kind of high on him and see him as a more top prospect. And then we also had Taya versus Jade. This match was awesome. Jade and Taya started out um, kind of slow. They felt each other out. It didn't take long for the action to heat up. There were a lot of big slaps, a lot of big punches, a lot of big kicks. Taya threw Jade from the ring to the floor. Jade tripped Taya into a splits on the apron. You know, the hardest part of the ring. Taya got knocked to the floor. We went picture in picture during the match, which I don't really care for. Excuse me. But at the same time, it was a longer match, which was nice. It was surprising for Taya to get a match. She hasn't been signed with AEW that long. For her to get this high-profile feud, high-profile match on Dynamite, very cool. But when we came back from the commercial... Jade was working over Taya. She's talking a lot of trash, but then Taya fought back. She hit a superplex. There was a Canadian destroyer. Um, even though Taya is Canadian, you think she'd be the master of the Canadian destroyer. We only got a two count. Taya fought out of the Jaded. Then she hit the Sullivan maneuver. That got a two count. Taya was setting up for the road to Valhalla, but she hesitated. And in that split second, that was all that Jade needed. And she rolled Taya up and grabbed a handful of Taya's tights. And that was enough to get the win and retain her title. So uh, I have to ask based on that, she she hesitated. Was it she hesitated because she was playing with the crowd? Was it because she was afraid that move was going to be too much? Or uh, I, I think she was going to do the – there's been a feud over the finisher, whether it's the Road to Bahala yeah. or the Jaded. And so I think she thought she would – I don't know. Maybe she decided to do something else or she didn't. There's been some confliction about using that as her finisher. And and so I'm I'm not really certain. It, she just hesitated. See, they had an opportunity for story there. That's why I was hoping there was something there. All right, sorry. Keep going. Yeah, but yeah, that was the Lucha action this week on AEW. Um, not not a ton of actual Lucha action, just Luchadors in action. But very cool this week. It's always a good week if you get to see Bandito and Taya on your main flagship program for the company and in Heck such yeah. high-profile matches, title matches. Uh, you know, that's really exciting. And as I mentioned, it's looking like we're coming up on a brand split for AEW. They're going to have a Saturday night show coming up this summer starting in June, uh, rumored to be called AEW Collision. Uh, it'd be a two hour program. And with that brand split, we're seeing a lot of people like Taya had previously mostly been on Rampage. Now she's on Dynamite. So you can surmise that just a month before the program starts, they're trying to give Taya some shine before the show starts. And she may be a bigger deal. That's the kind of thing I'm looking for when I watch. And we saw that with Bandito too, even though they both lost, they both looked incredible and they didn't lose because they weren't, because they were the lesser competitor. That wasn't why they lost. Yeah. They lost for other reasons. And so they still look strong. Great setup. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, Jeff Jarrett said that crazy moves, uh, crazy finishes, blood, all of that is a dime a dozen now because you can see it in every promotion, yep. almost every wrestler. And so AEW is going to lean into the stories, and we're going to see a lot more story than we had previously seen. Which has been the big thing I've been asking them to do for the last year. So Yeah, yeah absolutely. And so I, I think it's really getting ready to be an exciting time in AEW. Like I say, new program coming out this summer. They're 
They canceled just, Dark Elevation, so things yeah. are you know shaking up in AEW, and we're kind of on the cusp of a new era. And to see people like Taya and Bandito getting that polish before the the new era starts, I think is a positive sign for their placement within it. So I have to ask because I follow this new story a little bit, but obviously not as much as you. Is the brand split official? Or is it still just largely speculated based off of the CM Punk rumors? It's still largely speculated, but they are absolutely selling tickets for Saturday night shows. And they're referred (laughs) to as filming. And quietly before Dynamite, like when I bought my tickets for Dynamite in Kansas City, it was here in March. At the time, it said the only, our only visit to Kansas City in 2023. And then at some point before the show, it quietly changed to our only Dynamite taping in Kansas City for 2023. And so there's a lot of subtle signs like that that people are noticing that really build up to the fact that it looks like it's going to be a separate touring brand. Yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean brand split. They uh, just to, to fill everyone in, uh, there is a rumor going around that everybody that was uh, involved in Brawl Out still doesn't want to share locker rooms with each other. So you'll have the Elite on one show, and you'll have CM Punk and FTR, Lord knows, probably yeah. FTR, yeah. Lord knows who else, on the other show. Uh, but it could be it could be more fluid. It doesn't have to be a full-on brand split because the WWE has proven so many times over that they don't work once injuries start ruining your storylines. So, yeah. just, you know, just curious to see how they're actually going to play it out. But, yes, to your point, I know that the shows are confirmed. I just didn't know if the, uh, you know, a brand split had been confirmed. It, it hasn't been formally announced, to my knowledge, but I okay. believe that it's forthcoming. I look forward to hearing more on that. Yeah. And we'll cover it as we hear more. Right. Okay. Right. So it looks, uh, speaking of AEW, we do have some Ring of Honor news as well. And this is a genuine, uh, well, I shouldn't say genuine. This is a soft brand split here because AEW has had ROH for a while, but they have worked pretty hard to have distinct rosters, have their own programming. ROH now has a weekly show on the uh, Honor Club site uh, that you can subscribe to and watch. It's a, a little over an hour, usually. Um, and and they seem to be giving us pretty consistent Lucha action. It's nowhere near as good as right before ROH went out of business and we were getting consistently some of the best Lucha matches of all time. Well, not of all time, of the United States. Uh, and, um, you know, we were consistently getting that. We're still getting good quality stuff. To this week we got LFI uh, against uh, uh, d- 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 the, the infantry uh, consisting of Carly Bravo and Sean Dean. This was mostly a glorified squash match uh, with uh, Preston Vance doing the majority of the work and then Roosh coming in right at the end. But uh, lots of LFI-style antics, so that's kind of fun. If you are a long-term fan of that, they're still keeping that brand alive that way. Um, Preston Vance is now wearing pinstripes and carrying the LFI logo. With the thing that I found the most interesting, that I hope they lean into more at some point, is his part of his walkout. He has like a towel or a scarf around his neck. But he has masks of luchadors that are tied onto it. And if you look closely, it looks like ones that they've, LFI have, have stolen from wrestlers in the past. So this could become part of an interesting storyline at some point. So super cool on that. And, uh, we had a, we had a Brian Cage match. Um, Brian Cage is now part of one third of the six man tag team champions. Um, they kept saying that, but they wouldn't tell me who his two partners were. So I missed somewhere along the line. I missed a title change, but, uh, I will try and find that out for you. 
And then uh, you had Rocky Mar- Romero in the main event. So, like, good episode of ROH. Uh, I'm not going to give away the results yet because uh, I would like more people that are Lucha fans to go over there and, and watch it for yourself. But uh, it's all pretty predictable. If you have heard the matches that I've mentioned, you know who's going to win if that's the important part to you. Um, but that's what I've got for ROH. Uh, we will keep an eye on it. Dusty and I are both still kind of keeping an eye on it because it was mine before AEW bought it. And Dusty's uh, still got his ROH Honor Club subscription going. So, you know, yeah. someday we'll, we'll figure out which one of us is going to keep paying that bill. <laughs> there we go. That's all what I've got, though. Um, Miranda, where are we headed to next? Uh, we are heading down, well, talking about brand splits, down to <laughs> WWE with some news from this past week about the brand split and uh, the LWO. So, Dusty, go ahead and uh, take it away. Well, first up. <laughs> oh, everybody get your salt ready. Just yeah. Get your salt. <laughs> On last Friday's SmackDown, we had a match between Zelina Vega and Sonya Deville. And it was a really odd choice for the storyline. You think you'd want your title challenger coming up for your big pay-per-view in Puerto Rico to get some shine. But Zelina won with a somewhat lucky schoolboy roll-up after being beat up and just completely on the losing end of the entire match. She did not seem legitimate. She did manage to counter a suplex and avoid a big kick, but then she, like I mentioned, just grabbed the schoolboy for the win. It was a real letdown. Uh, you know, Zelina had been doing well lately. We were so high on LWO, and, like, I'm not sure what WWE was thinking with this match, but it <laughs> just didn't work for me. Like, so oh, I, man. It, it gets deeper than this, too, because the person she's now struggling with is somebody who also classically is being used as enhancement on TV. So you're basically taking two weak people, putting them against each other, and you can't let either one of them have a dominant victory. Yeah. Like, uh, just not good. Uh, I was really disappointed, and disappointed in general in how the LWO has been treated. Um, we on Raw I didn't see it. It was on the it was on the live version but not on the Hulu version, the cut down ninety minute. But Judgment Day came out, they Miranda can kinda of touch on Damian Priest's promo. It was in Spanish. Dominic was booed for over ninety seconds and literally could not get a word out on the microphone. They had to cut the show show short at the end. They were like, sorry folks, we're all out of time. Gotta go. Because the booing had gone on for so long against Dominic that they decided to lean into it for the for the show. Like crazy stuff. Uh Miranda, did you want to talk about Damian Priest's promo? Oh, just that it was interesting. So um, Damian Priest cut a, a promo against Bad Bunny in the middle of the ring, um, and it was all in Spanish. So it was like he was talking directly at Bad Bunny, and he pretty much just, you know, more typical promo saying, you know, Bad Bunny, uh, I'm going to, you know, humiliate you in front of your fans. Well, essentially he said, you made people, you made the fans believe that you can actually fight or you can actually win but i'm going to go to puerto rico and i'm going to embarrass you and and beat the crap out of you in front of your your fans your family and you know playing up uh, for damien priest especially kind of the moniker of the punisher the punishment of the judgment day and for those who may not be familiar his previous name before damien priest was punishment martinez so leaning into that, but to me it was just more fascinating that WWE allowed him to cut a full promo in Spanish, and I know it is a, a tool to try and get more Spanish speakers to tune into the show um, because it's you know uh, two very you know well known. Uh, Puerto Rican, and I wouldn't say wrestlers because one is a, you know, a musician, one's a wrestler, but, um, a way to grab, you know, Spanish, uh, speaking viewers 
to uh, backlash. So, and also, you know, again, it's it's being uh, hosted in Puerto Rico. So, uh, of course, that's going to be a, uh, another element to it. But to, like I said, if you would have told me, you know, even two months ago that you'll have a full Spanish promo on Monday Night Raw, I would have said you're crazy. I, I mean, there was never, um, never a time I would have thought that would be a thing. I, they almost always, like, anyone who was of Hispanic origin and was fluent in that would always do hybrid promos. They yeah. would, you know, yeah. they would they would either say what they said in Spanish and then say it again in English, or they would they would break into a little bit of Spanish somewhere in the middle to to act like they were losing control or something to that effect, and then go back to English. But to just have the full—I mean, I love your point that it, it does make it seem like it's more of a I'm looking into the camera and talking directly to you, to you, Bad Bunny, sort of thing, because that adds a lot of authenticity to the whole concept of an interview like that. Yeah. So to me, it was just fascinating. I, I you know, enjoyed it. Just Spanish trash trash talking is always something <laughs> I I enjoy. I get a little hood. Uh, when I heard that, because that's Puerto Rican Spanish in particular, too. There's kind of an slang and an accent to it that, you know, make me feel very, very tough. So, um, <laughs> it's good. and other big things. I mean, they announced they're going to be doing a press conference in San Juan. I believe it's Friday um, afternoon um, before SmackDown. Bad Bunny's going to be on SmackDown as well. Um, so a lot of, you know, extra elements here to make this feel more closer to like a WrestleMania SummerSlam as far as the fanfare behind it or some of the press behind it compared to a, you know, normal, uh, premium live event. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing this event just to see the, all the, uh, the, circumstances and things that they have like around it but more of the elements of the show mm-hmm. uh, than than the majority of the show but um it's still it's a show that's captivated my attention so they've done their job yeah yeah, yeah i'm very excited for this one and then also on wwe this week we had Zelina Ray and the LWO being drafted to SmackDown. Rhea Ripley and Judgment Day were drafted to Raw, but they were drafted separately, which was interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. One of the few factions that was drafted separately, because, like, the bloodline all went. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, I thought, well, technically it was kind of similar, like the bloodline, because Roman Reigns and Solo were drafted together and the Usos were drafted. So yes. it was oh, like yeah, that's right. They did make similar, the yeah. But but they, it, but but others yeah. like LWO was all drafted together. Um, the OC were all drafted together. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it was weird that some factions were drafted separately and some were drafted together. And what's interesting is Rhea is the SmackDown Women's Champion, and she was drafted to Raw. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've, we've seen this happen before. You know, sometimes there's a a title exchange. Sometimes, you know, there's you yeah. know, other things at play. There's, you know, rumors right now that there may be new women's titles coming with new names. So it, it's, yeah, un, unknown right there, but very interesting. And well, then, I'm going to just hop oh, in because we did talk about this off air. Uh, Non-Lucha related most of the titles for the shows got drafted uh, to to go to the opposite show, so mm-hmm. they're they're clearly doing something, uh, and that is one of the other things that's got me excited. And, and hopefully that that means we see some some big shakeups or to Dusty's illusion there, uh, the women's titles if they change names that means we could see some new faces and new uh, new storylines going on because they'll change. The name that changed the belt, and maybe try and give everything a fresh coat of paint. Yeah, it'd be very exciting. And, you know, very cool. And also, we had the supplemental draft, and we had Los Lotharios remaining at Raw. They were previously at Raw, but they were drafted to Raw. 
the supplemental. Not a lot of great names in the supplemental draft. But the uh, not on TV draft. Let's just, yeah. just call it what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully we we see something good. I can't imagine having talent like Angel Garza and Umberto Carrillo and not using them. We see Triple H is ostensibly in charge of creative now, at least to some degree. And Angel Garza had, you know, really nice showing in NXT when he was there. And so hopefully we get some more of that Angel Garza. And, but right now, not, not so great. They also, we kind of touched on this, but they separated the LWO and Judgment Day. So Ray and Dominic have separated, which if you're going to do the brand split, I think was the way to go. That way you keep them separated for as long as possible and you can ride out the Dominic thing. And when the wave starts to recede a little, that's when you can bring Ray back into it and really take it to the next level and finish it off. I genuinely think this is going to be one of the greatest wrestling feuds of all time. But uh, Brendan mentioned this. Uh, Hugo Savanovich and uh, Conan were talking on Conan's show. They don't like the way LWO is being used. They are not winning any matches. The tag guys are not winning matches. Zelina won her match just barely and and looked like a, a I mean like a lucky fluke at best and. It was just, just the presentation of LWO has not been what it could be or should be. Yeah, it's weird that in the context of, you know, the bigger feud, I don't think people notice that they're not winning because, yeah. you know, Ray wins, but the full LWO is not winning anything. But people don't seem to mind or notice that because... The LWO is really much more of the the foil for, um, you know, um, for you know for judgment for day, Judgment just, Day, yeah, 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 all of that. So I don't know. To me, it's just, yeah. I I I feel like some people are noticing, but I you're right. I would be curious to see how people who don't watch wrestling like as regularly and as, as detail oriented as we do feel about that because um you know, I don't think people are aware that the LWO haven't won a match since January. I mean, unless yeah. you count Selena's win. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I said. Like they're not winning tag <laughs> matches at all. Well, yeah. Well, that statistic before was they hadn't. It was singles or tag matches. So now they've broken the yeah. singles streak, but yeah. just barely, in a way that wasn't very impressive or will make people think. Well, maybe that's changing now. So, yeah, I don't I I agree with with Conan and and Hugo that uh, it's just it's it's a it's a waste. Like, you have this really historical, really important thing, and uh, it, it's not being used on TV. But, but uh, Miranda, you had a stat for us on that, that they where they are just kicking a bunch of butt. Oh, yes, yes. So <laughs> it's been reported, I believe, by WrestleNomics um, that the LWO T-shirts are the uh, best-selling T-shirts in all of WWE um, Dusty, I believe you said what three weeks in a row? Three weeks in a row, yeah. This three yeah. weeks in a row. So that's a big mile. I mean, and we kind of talked about this, and I know some of this maybe have been on and off air about, um, you know, the revival of the LWO is, you know, something that it's a trademark that WWE owns. So you know they could choose to do with it what they will. We've had a lot of commentary about utilization of luchadors and representation of Latino culture um, on WWE programming. This has been one of the better, you know, um, representations of it in a pretty popular storyline. And the fact that it's also been leveraged to, you know, to, to market to a larger audience, to be hosting a premium live event um, from, uh, you know, a, a Spanish speaking, um, uh, principality, 
I think is the legal term of it. Yeah. Um, you know, they're going to be coming back to Mexico later this summer. Um, you know, LWO shirts. I mean, that's it just it's money. It's money. Mine actually came into the mail today. So I'm very excited about that. Um, so there we go. Yes. So that's, um, you know, I, I am one of those people that spent my money to buy especially my Puerto Rican LWO shirt, you know, very excited yeah. to see what that will look like on Friday and Saturday um, in San Juan. But, uh, you know, it, it's uh, the booking of it is definitely not strong. Maybe it's going to be better on SmackDown when you finally separate the Judgment Day and the LWO. And then finally the LWO may be able to get their own wins because ultimately the Judgment Day is the stronger faction but Rey Mysterio is the stronger performer out of everybody. So when you have them face against other people, each other, if there's more people in the mix, the LWO is going to lose. If it's just Rey Mysterio, he's going to win. So if you kind of take that formula out and now they can both start on clean slates, I think this could be a way for LWO to gain momentum and wins without having to jeopardize the strength of the Judgment Day. I hope that's how it plays out. That's yeah, that'd that'd be, my uh, that'd be great. I'm excited to see the the live event backlash. Of course, Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest. We'll have all the results for that next week. Really going to be, I think, a hot crowd, hot show, a hot SmackDown. That, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm looking, looking forward, forward to. to. Yeah, um, I do know too. They are doing. Um, who are they? They're doing some other matches on the SmackDown. I know they are doing Karrion Cross versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, so that will be pretty uh, good. Kind of feeling bad for Karrion there, you know, that he can't even get a match on Backlash, but still being <laughs> able to, to represent. I kind of felt it was like a prerequisite. Like, that's, you know, if you're Puerto Rican, like, you automatically get a pass to the show, right? Like, that's yeah, how I understand. Think. You would it think. Works for Bad Bunny and Damien. Yeah, his, it works his for Bad character Bunny. isn't Puerto Rican. His character is goth, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, blood is blood. That's just. I no, I'm it. I'm just I'll saying. Yeah. Damien Priest is like Damien Priest's character is not Puerto Rican. He <laughs> is Puerto Rican, and his character is goth. Uh, yeah, he's, he's also shit. goth. Yeah, uh, it's true. I just wanted to, I just, I was like, wait, who are we talking about? Are we talking about <laughs> Jimmy Priest or, 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 or uh, Gary and I, Cross? Cause... I wasn't going to make that connection, but yeah, I mean, what's going on? Are you guys like still in the 90s in Puerto Rico? Is that what's going on? Uh, <laughs> it depends on, on, on where, I, I, you know. But, uh, uh but yeah, anyway, so, uh, you know, yeah, Backlash this weekend, uh, Friday Night Smackdown. We're just going to be talking about all that good stuff on next week's episode. Definitely, I'm sure there'll be some some bright spots um, from Friday and Saturday that we'll be uh, going over next week. Yeah. yeah, we'll have all the news. Yes, all the news. All of it. Uh, you know, speaking of WWE and, and the, uh, draft, uh, let's jump into NXT, um, and not really any other transition other than that, because this is not so much related to the draft other than this, you know, puts some of the talent in NXT in, in a pretty interesting situation now where you've had some major talent move from NXT to Raw or SmackDown. That leaves some gaps within NXT for the next, you know, big stars. Um, and one of them that many people have talked about is Dragon Lee. Um, this week on NXT, he faced Jordan Devlin. Jordan Devlin, who got drafted, I believe, to SmackDown. Is that right? Or was it Raw? I believe it was I SmackDown. Think it was, yeah, I think it was SmackDown. Um, but so this is, um, you know, the... The last match for, um, we're pulling up right now because it's bothering me. I need to, I need to know. I think it was Raw because he's not listed on the. Oh man, or Jay, no, I'm sorry, Jordan Devlin. 
JD McDonough, I I call him by name, but JD McDonough got <laughs> got drafted to Raw. So last match in um in NXT because all of the draft picks will be in effect on uh, May eighth, which is the first you know Monday um uh, after backlash. Um, but Dragon Lee faced uh, JD McDonough. Um, got the distraction from Noam Dar, who made his return to NXT a few weeks ago. Caused the distraction that uh, JD McDonough was able to capitalize and get the win. It looks like uh, Dragon Lee and Noam Dar are going to be in a feud uh, coming up. It will be interesting to see what that means. I mean, going from the North American title picture to a feud with Noam Dar, who... You know, we haven't seen on television very much um, is a little worrisome just because it's not in that title picture or not in a more elevated role. But it is NXT. It is a, a great way for Dragon Lee to work with a established star, with someone who has a lot of personality and charisma. Um, and so maybe it would kind of bring that out with him as well. But um, this also, you know, this draft could be a great opportunity for Dragon Lee to kind of take that next step and really get into that upper echelon of NXT. Uh, you know, this is the, the path has been cleared a little bit. And one thing that he has against a lot of people in NXT is experience and skill. I think it's just working that television product and becoming a character that people are invested in. That's going to take time. That's going to take effort. Um, but I think it's very possible. And I'm curious just what your guys' thoughts on that as well. You know, now that kind of the Red Sea has parted a little bit in NXT, where do you see, you know, Dragon Lee kind of, uh, kind of landing? I well, think he's going to be, well, sorry. I think he's going to be world champion eventually and sooner rather than later. I mean, I think that we're going to – he's establishing himself. We recently saw Santos Escobar's comments about how good the performance center was for him and kind of going through NXT, and then it really helped him develop in ways he didn't realize he needed to develop. And so I think that we'll see some of that with Dragon Lee. He's a guy that just gets it, and I think that – you know, I, I do think that we'll see him – you know, kind of starting out slowly, but I do think that he will be a champion very soon. I think they'll just move that right up. Noam Dar was allegedly one of Vince's favorite wrestlers. It was because of the way he said Alicia Fox. Uh, but because of that, Vince is very high on Noam Dar. And with Vince back in charge at the head of the company, if he likes Noam Dar and he's seeing Dragon Lee, that's a good thing. So... Hopefully we'll get to see some of that. We we saw, you know, Andrade, how amazing he was in NXT. We saw how amazing Santos was in NXT. And I think we're going to see something very similar with Dragon Lee. Yeah, I, so he covered most of my points. I will point out they started uh, Dragon Lee on the hype train. Like, they were hyping him before he even got in the ring. They've given him several opportunities to stand out and and show off that he is a fantastic wrestler uh, who has a a, a one of a kind kind of presence. Like the you know he he stands out just by being in the ring. Like he doesn't even have to wrestle before you're like this guy's got something that draws your attention. So uh, I think um, I think to Dusty's point, they're going to. Fast track him to towards the top of the card, if not the championship itself, and uh, and then he'll probably be one of the mainstays there for the next several months. Uh, he probably won't last all the way till the next draft before he gets called up, though. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, this is the first draft that we've had in two years because of COVID. So, you know, if now the plan is to do a draft once a year, maybe even twice a year, who knows? You know, we could see him on, you know, Raw or SmackDown within a year. Um, I know also in some ways there were some names from NXT we thought we were going to see drafted like a Braun Breaker that didn't. And I think it's, you know, they still need some cushion at the top. Um, but it's also, you know, likely that a call up could happen almost at any point. So it, it will be very interesting to see 
uh, where he lands. But I agree. At least the North American title picture is, I think, a, a place we will see him sooner rather than later, unless he kind of jumps ahead of the line, at least to be a contender for the NXT championship. Maybe not winning it, but I could see him being in a in a program for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's it for NXT this week. We are going to move ahead to our final news story, and that is CMLL with Brendan. Well, I'm going to follow this up with one other breaking news thing, but yes. Uh, just real quick, I wanted to mention CMLL did crown a new Universal Champion. Uh, they, um, I have to refine my notes here. Uh, they... Uh, it, you, you, we, it came down to Templario, Atlantis Jr., and Dragon Rojo Jr. Uh, it was, uh, those, uh, it was a 10 minute match, uh, and, uh, and, uh, I, I'm, tr- I can't read the rest of my notes, so I'm just gonna jump right to it. Templario is your new Universal Champion. Universal Champion. So there you go. Templario, new Universal Champion. This is kind of like a grand, it's an open way championship. All the uh, champions for the men were eligible to enter into this tournament, as well as several legends. So there we have Templario now as the new Universal Champion. I look forward to them putting him in this into a bunch of matches that will not make men, make sense to me, but will be fantastic to watch anyway. So. Uh, we got that. Um, I did want to add also that uh, as we were doing the show, Prestige Wrestling, uh, who operates out of Portland, decided to go on to Twitter. Uh, I'm going to actually just read the whole uh, the whole thing. He, he says, uh, screw it. It may be translated for more family-friendly language. If I have to pay for a, uh, a blue check, I'm going to put up uh, full matches too. So he has released the entire match of Bandito versus Alex Shelley from a recent show on Twitter. So go check it out. That's Prestige Wrestling. Uh, That's at Wrestle Prestige. It is a 26 minute match. I haven't even finished, I haven't even started watching it yet so I can't give you any results but uh, if you really want I'll do results next week on it but it's free. It's a full, full free match so go check it out. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, of course, we're going to give our socials in just a, a moment. Uh, but Brendan, we've been highlighting Lucha Central, uh, throughout the night and really it's the name of our show. So <laughs> would you be able to let our listeners know what they can find on luchacentral.com? Uh, yeah. Well, so if you haven't visited luchacentral.com, uh, and you're listening to this show, man, is it really, really time to go there. Uh, LuchaCentral.com is your online home for Lucha Libre, where you can get all of the top news in English and in Spanish. You can find the best curated video content and original content that is not seen anywhere else. You can find when Lucha Libre events would be happening in your area. You can find photo galleries from top photographers covering Lucha Libre all around the world. It's a place to have your voices heard from weekly polls to annual awards, seen and read by the top executives in all of the major Lucha Libre promotions across the globe. And it's still free, so really, if you haven't done been there yet, it's time. LuchaCentral.com is your centralized place for all the things Lucha Libre. Yes, of course, LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. You can find Lucha Central on social media as well, at Lucha Central on Facebook and Instagram, and at LuchaCentral.com on Twitter. You can also visit Lucha Central's YouTube page that has hours upon hours of exclusive content, like previous episodes of the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast in English and in Espanol, as well as interviews, matches, and Even things like our virtual Expo Lucha that happened a few years ago, the whole thing is up available on Lucha Central's YouTube page for free. So go ahead and check it out. 
while you're at it, go ahead and follow us on social media. Dusty, can you let our listeners know where they can find you? Yes, I am on Facebook at facebook.com slash Dusty Murphy, and I am on Instagram at Dusty Murphy. And Brendan, can you let our listeners know where they can find you? Uh, once again, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Uh, the answer is no, there's no Whataburgers in California whatsoever. Uh, and then also, uh, the Facebook group that I alluded to earlier that we have and we keep forgetting to talk about is Lucha Central Weekly News on Facebook. It is a group. We currently have it where you have to apply to get in because we don't like robots. I'm sorry, robots, but, you know, I don't want to buy your cheap t-shirts. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, so please join us there. Uh, we've got Pep and now Red Card Lucha and a, a bunch of people posting a lot of good stuff. Dusty posts there quite a bit, too, uh, if you want to check out our news there. But to get back to the question you asked, asked me, Miranda, I am 321 T-Shirt Guy. That's the number. It's 321 T-Shirt Guy is all spelled out. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. And I'm all over the Twitters. And me, Miranda Morales, you can find me at the hashtag Miranda on Instagram and Facebook. No Twitter. Don't forget, if you are a Lucha Libre fan, promoter, photographer, referee, announcer, anything related to pro wrestling and Lucha Libre, please feel free to reach out to us. Let us know about shows happening in areas, whether those are results or previews. We would love to feature, feature them on a future edition of the Indie Roundup. We would love to promote them on the show to let our listeners know more about Lucha Libre happening all over the United States. And one quick thing, if you are listening to our show on your favorite podcast streaming platform like Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Subscribe so that way you get a new notification each and every time a new episode drops. You can leave us a five-star rating, and you can write in a review. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you agree with us, disagree with us, things that we should do differently, things that we should keep the same, whatever it is. Make sure that you let us know in the reviews or through social media. Hey, and that does it for this week's episode of the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast. Thank you all so much for listening. For Brendan Barr and Dusty Murphy, I'm Miranda Morales. Thank you all so much, and we will be with you next time. <laughs>